Welcome back. I'm Michael Hagan, Chief Instructor here at Apex Content Performance. And today I'm joined by a very special guest. Um, today I have with me Ariel Torres, longtime U.S. National Karate team member and USA Karate's first and potentially only Olympic medalist. Welcome, Ariel, and thank you for joining us. Hello, Sensei. Thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure. I'm so excited to get going and talking about these topics we have. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. No, again, thank you so much for joining us. I know that um, uh, you're very busy training. You know, you've got, got team trials coming up next and whatnot. And so just if I could, uh, again, just say thank you so much for, for taking a little bit out of your day to spend some time with us. So one thing, you know, I, I, I follow you on Instagram and, and on all social media and you know, you have a really positive outlook on things. And so I, I kind of want to, uh, towards your karate and towards your training, and for today's interview discussion, I'd, I'd rather it be more of a discussion than an interview, but I kind of want to gear towards those topics, if you don't mind. Of course. So the first one I want to start off with is you know, your first Premier League was, I believe, the first qualifying event. Yes. yes. For in 2018. Uh, was it Berlin? Somewhere Berlin. in Germany. Yep. And so you went from just qualifying for Premier League in summer of June of 2018 to bronze medalist <laughs> at the Olympics, at the Tokyo Olympics. Can, can you kind of give uh, an outlook or, or, or an overview of like, how did that happen? I mean, what did you do to go from, I just got in, I'm just able to qualify, to being in the finals, being in the medal match, and winning the bronze medal at the Olympics? Of course. I, I got goosebumps when you were saying that because, you know, it brings back all these re memories extremely fast through my head, like a picture book going through everything. And um, I think it all began for me in Okinawa in 2017. It was my first Series A event ever. I had just come up with the... I made the decision. I told my sensei, hey, sensei, I think I want to do Series A's now, as soon as possible. And I remember I told them a year prior to that, that, hey, I want to go to the Olympics and I think I can make it happen. I just need to compete as much as possible, yada, yada, yada. But my first event started in Okinawa in 2017. I went there and I trained with sensei Hirata from the OGKK for like a week and a half before that. So I lived and breathed karate for a long time. And I, it, it's, it's just like 10 days, but it was a long time. We're talking about, I would wake up at four in the morning. We would do Hojo Undo training. I would eat breakfast. And then we would go outside to Kihon in his, in his front yard for like, I do not know how long. The days were so long. You know, it was eat, do karate, sit down, talk about karate, do some more karate, eat again, talk about karate, drive somewhere to do karate in a park, drive back to the dojo to do karate, Hojo Undo, boom. You know, it was, it was... This was living karate, and I had never lived karate until I went to Okinawa and literally lived karate. So, I feel like that gave me a different perspective on karate, not just competition. It was like, you know, maybe maybe this is the way to go. Maybe if I live karate, like how, and enjoy the process of like, you know, driving here, doing karate here, just because I want, hey, let's just do karate right now. You know, this yeah. technique came up by looking at the grass move. Let's move like grass, okay? Let's do that, you know? So karate became a way of thinking in every aspect. Anything I do, I can turn it into something karate-like. And I, w I competed in that Series A. I did round one against Japan. Um, I lost 3-2, and it wasn't a problem for me. I wasn't upset. It was Japan. They're really good. They're the, they're the people you want to defeat. They're the strongest karate guy, I believe, in the, in the world for karate. And I was like, okay, but... I went home and I was like, wow, let me do what I did in Okinawa. So I remember I woke up that day, I was brushing my teeth, I was hitting stances around the houses, I was doing dachis everywhere I went, I was uh, cooking in dachis, I was, everything, I was always, you know, Okinawa came into my head constantly, what I'm doing. And I spoke to my sensei and I was like, sensei, you know, did you have this experience in Okinawa as well? And he was like, yes, Ari, exactly like that, it was, you breathe, you breathe karate. And that kind of turned my life into karate. And it went from like, I was doing school, at the time I was going to college and everything and I was very close to finishing all I had to finish because I was doing high school and college at the same time. But I decided like, this Sensei, I want to go to the Olympics and I think that right now I need to live karate 100%, not 95, not 
100%. So at that moment, I said, okay, I'm just going to dedicate myself to 100% karate. Means working for karate, traveling for karate. My life will be karate. It will be my job. It will be everything. And with that being said, I started to organize myself more, program things, make my training programs to how to improve. I talked to my sensei more. Obviously, I started to listen more. You have to listen more, I believe, is one of the keys, especially since your sensei knows more than you, you have more experience. You need to listen. That was something that growing up is hard to do when you're a teenager and you're getting older and you're traveling and then you start to think you know something because you were somewhere someone was not. But then you just, you know, you take a step back and you realize that you don't know more than, than your sensei or you don't know more, at period. You know, you're still young and you still have so much more to learn. And the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. That was, you know, that, and that was a process. Like, yeah, I'm learning. And it's like, whoa. I really don't know anything. So um, before I knew it, I went to a Series A in 2018 in Guadalajara. That was a big event for me because I almost wanted to quit karate. I was there and it was 280 something competitors and I'm there warming up, it's freezing. They're running in front of me, the athletes are super crowded. And I'm looking at these, these guys are good. These guys are so much better than me. I do not even deserve to be around them. And then I would have the Japanese next to me because back then it was like 30 something of them competing with us. And it was so overwhelming. I was like, right. how can I beat these guys? I, I can't even beat that guy. And whatever, and I, I step on the tatami, I do my kata, I win round one against Belgium. And I'm like, oh, three, two, okay. Round two, I go against France and I win. And then round three against Netherlands, I win. And round four was against Moto Kasumasa, which is like, wow, one of the yeah. best Shotokan Japanese athletes out there in the world right now. And uh, I lost, no big deal. I was like, man, but I made it far. I did four rounds. And then before he knew it, he beat Shimbaba, made it to the finals, and now I'm in rapid charge. So I go again, I beat right. Spain, and then I lose to Hong Kong by 4-1. Uh, no big deal. I was like, wow, right. I did six rounds. And in my head, it was like, that's six rounds of experience that I have over my competitors now. Because I was able to step on the tatami, and I'm able to look at my video, get feedback. How did I feel? You know, what what's going on? Experience is, is something that we'll talk about later, I, because that's the... Most important thing for an athlete, experience. Where you're going, how many rounds you're performing, what are you doing? And I took that experience and I went home and I sat down with my sensei. I was like, sensei, look, I did this, I did that. Um, I think I did this wrong. I think I did this right. What do you think? Do you agree with me? Where am I off? What are we going to do? He's like, oh, so we started communicating a lot more about competitions. And then I go again, I go to another Series A, I make it three rounds, I lose to Japan. No big deal. I go to another Series A, I make it another, whatever rounds, I, and I always lost to Japan. And I was like, okay. Yeah. But we're getting close. We're getting a flag. I got a flag. You know, it's not like completely thrown off. Then I go to my first Premier League in the world, which was Berlin. I've never gone to Premier League. I don't know how it works. We have to do all these things. It's completely different than the than the norm. And I go against Chris from Hong Kong, Zeman. Mm -hmm. And um, I was nervous because I've looked up to this guy for so many years. You know, he growing up, this, yeah, this guy was getting medals. He was Asian medalist, uh, Premier, uh, Paris Open finals the year before. You know, big deal to me at least it was always a big deal and I'm competing against him and uh, I learned a lot because I made a bad kata choice I did bad I felt bad everything was wrong you know and again I, in my head I didn't lose not because I actually lost but because I gained something from that competition I gained an experience okay. I gained what yeah. not to do ever again you know all those thoughts like okay I feel bad why does my body feel bad why is the weather like this why does my gi not feel correct why is my belt not, why are my hands wet? Why is it, you know, why it was so many, I was complaining so much to myself. Like, why this, why that? Why do, why do I feel good? Why is my body tight? Why, you know, and I did it and I learned from it after I lost. I was like, oh, you know what? I'm not going to do that ever again. I'm not going to be negative about any situation. I'm going to avoid that as much as possible. And, and I actually did a vlog about that. And I spoke about it in the vlog. I was like, I felt very negative. I don't know why I felt negative, but I learned from it. Whatever. I move on, I start competing, I go, that was in 2018. At the end of that year, in 2018, we had the North American Cup. And the finals, right. I went against Waldo. Now, this is for one of the biggest events in karate at the time was the Pan American Games, which hadn't had kata right. for a long time. I'm sure you know, uh, right? A long time. Right? Yeah, uh, 19... Was 99 yeah, or 2003 uh, well, yeah. the last times With Antonio. That, that kata was in there? Yeah. And I'm like... This is a big deal. And now I have a chance to go. My senpai at the time, Joseph Martinez, had a back injury. And he was incredibly like, this dude, I looked up to this guy and I, and I could never catch up to him. And he had an injury. And I'm like, oh, he can't go. 
it's my time. You know, I, 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 it's my time to, to <laughs> yep. I, I think I can win this. And if I win, I qualify to the Pan American Games. Yep. Woo! Yep. Okay, before I knew it, they're sending Gakuji now. And now Gakuji's another competitor that we're, we're like, like this, constantly. I believe I that Karate, I, I believe Karate in the United States right now in Kata, male Kata is at its strongest. And will be because between Gakuji, myself, and Mason that we're competing international, we've been doing very well. And I think that the fact that all three of us are competing and I, I feel like none of us want to lose to any of us. You know, we all want to be at the yeah. top. So I feel like yeah. just saying that on the side because I feel like that pushes us a lot. But, well, he goes and I'm like, oh, man, okay, now we got it. Now it got hard again. So whatever. I go through my rounds. I win the semifinal against Gakuji. I make it to finals. It was a 3-2. And I'm like, oh, I'm close. I have to go against Waldo from Mexico. But I had beaten Waldo right. previously for the bronze medal in, in PKF in 2018. I'm like, okay, okay. And I lose 3-2. Mm. And... I cried. That was the first time I cried after losing. I've never cried from losing. I don't care if I lose. Like I said, I there's an experience I give, and I hurt. And I sat down and I was like, ah. And I and I recorded in the vlog. It's the one time you'll see me not smiling in a vlog because I was so upset. Not at the judges. Not at myself. It was just man, it sucks. You don't. I don't like. I don't want to lose. And I don't think anyone wants to lose. But it hurt that it was like just taken away from me. I went back home. I trained. I trained, you know, like normal. I changed things. I, I took out popperin from my repertoire at that time because that was the cut that I lost, and I just didn't feel it like for my body. You know, my sensei told me it's not good for you, and I'm like, no, sensei, I think it is. I'm sure you've had that conversations with some of your students, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, sensei, I want to do it. I think it's good for me. No, no, it feels good. Look, look, look. It's not. Whatever. Yeah, I ended up taking it out because he was right, and I, I had to understand that by another experience. That I could have avoided if I listened. You see what I'm saying? But I didn't. Right. But because, again, you know, this is a phase that we all go through as athletes and since a student thing. And uh, I learned my lesson, whatever. I keep training. I start training the same way. I keep improving. I, I just start listening to my sentence. Since what are we doing? This is what we're doing. Okay, I'll be there. We'll do that. We'll go here. 2019 happens. I, I won the national the team trials. I became the first seed. I beat my senpai in the final day. It was a big deal for me because I was always like behind them, behind them, behind them. And I was never in a rush to pass him. I didn't mind because he's someone I looked up yeah. to for a long time. So I didn't mind being behind him. But that time I won. Uh, he Again, he was injured in December. So I knew in a way that he wasn't going to be at full power for January. So I went to January in my head knowing that I'm going to win. Like, that was my mentality. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. My senpai's not at full power. I need to take advantage of this situation and pass. And I did. I got first. And the point system happened. And how, how did that, did the point, did the point thing have a, have an impact on, on either on your training or your performance or how, how, how did that? Great question. Because how did that work for you? I think the point systems change the way, the katas we choose. You're going to notice that in adults, you're not going to see a lot of chatanyaras anymore. You're not going to see a lot of Chibanas, a lot of Kishimoto no Kusanku. You're not going to see these katas from athletes that are doing, going to semifinals, at least for Goju Ryu, Shito Ryu, Ryu practitioners. You're going to see like Super Impe, Ana, Nanandai, Ohandai. You're going to see shorter, more powerful katas for the all adults. Very rare you're going to see a guy do a papurin too that will get far. And if they do, they're Japanese and they're incredible. You know, so you start seeing that the kata trend changed a lot from Chatanyaras to Anan. People didn't expect like an Anan would be a Chatanyara back in that time. And the point right. system changed. I didn't realize that. But the more experience I gained, I gained, the more I knew. So I'm like, okay. I went to Paris. It was super difficult. I didn't understand the point system. I didn't know how the four thing worked. And the point system changed a lot during the year too. A lot of the rules changed with how they're going to select who goes to the next round. Are they going to shuffle it? Are they going to stay the same? You know, a lot of things changed. But in Paris, I was competing. The time was super slippery. It was Paris Open. You know, it's a big deal. Everyone watches it online. I was and I had Chris in my pool. Very difficult, right? I had the African champion from South South um, South Africa, uh, Michael Duplessis. I had the Turkish guy Yamek, which was a big yeah. deal. This dude had beaten several good people in his in, in his time. I had also Kiuna. Come on, so I had. It was a very difficult pool. And I managed to beat Chris, I managed to meet Michael, and I managed to beat the Turkish guy and make it to the next round. And I was super happy. I got one round. And the thing about the point system that's beautiful is you can see what each judge gives you. 
Right. And I see I had Hayashida, Shikashi from Japan. And I right. see a, three judges gave me victory over him, even right. though I lost by points. And I'm like, right. whoa, if this was flags, I could have won 3-2. You know, so now my confidence starts to build up because I'm like, listen, if there are three judges here that think I'm better than a Japanese athlete that I think is incredible, there may be more. And if the time comes where the, the right amount of judges are sitting down that they believe I'm better, that's my time to shine. You know, so these, these thoughts in my head started to come up and I started to get a little bit of confidence. Like, I'm not that bad. I'm not terrible. I should, you know, I should just keep going. And then I go to Dubai. The same thing happens. I, t I'm, I did the first tiebreaker in history of Premier Leagues against, um, who was it? Iran. He was the previous bronze medalist yes. at the at the Premier League and silver medalist at the the World University Championships, and I beat him in the tiebreaker. And I go to the next round, and then I lose again in round two. So then I go to more events, you know, and I start noticing the trend. And I notice the trend of the shorter katas in Austria, where I I do round one superimpe, round two anandai, round three was the difficult round, which I've never gotten past round three or round two. I did Anan, and my competitors are throwing Chatanyara, blah, 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 really high cut. And I went with Anan, and I make it to semifinals. I'm like, whoa, I see something. Then we go to Pan American Championships. I won Pan American Championships. That there. Well, can, can, can I interrupt go for it. real quick there? Because you got bronze in 2018 yep. in Pan American Championships. And you go to 2019 PKF. And who are you against in the finals? I was against... Uh, I had faced in 2018 Antonio Diaz in semifinals, and this time I faced Antonio Diaz in the finals. Yeah. So you fit, you were with Antonio Diaz in the finals at PKF. And what and what was the result of, of, of that competition? So I won that one. I got first. But I feel like I had my, my, my coach. I have my sensei and I have my coach. My sensei is Robert Young and my coach is Javier Mantilla, right? And Javier Mantilla is very strong mentally working with my head and yeah. i believe that how strong you are mentally is just as important if not more important how strong are you physically and technically and many things because the technique will be that my sensei helps me out so much with the technique but i feel like uh mantilla is like a psychologist in my head and he's just there he knows when to turn me on and put me in the right spot so, and then all the things that sensei robert young has taught me technically just appear out of nowhere in that moment that i need it most right there so it's ser seriously like a Teamwork, a serious teamwork. And when I made it to the finals, Mantia takes me to the side and he's like, okay, listen, you're going to win. You're going to win. Put that in your head. You're not going to go to the finals and have fun. Don't think you have nothing to lose because you do have something to lose. And he told me then and there, he's like, you win this, you will get a medal at the Olympics. I kid you not. I get goosebumps, but I, he tells me. And this was in 2019 in March. And he tells me, you win this, you will get the medal in the Olympics. Because for the Olympics, it's going to be Kiuna, Quintero, Ali, Antonio, or Busato. That's it. That's how it's going to be. And if you win here, you will get a medal in the Olympics. And I was like, so he's like, yes, you do have something to lose. Don't listen to all the, everyone around you and say, yeah, just enjoy your final. No, no, no. You have a lot to lose. This is your career. You win, you make it. And I won. And I was like, oh, no way. Yes. I was very happy, obviously. You know, you just beat someone you looked up to. Yeah. Yeah. And now this is when I learned how to manage what comes after defeating someone of his caliber. Expectations. Pressure. Self-doubt. Are you good enough to, to, to hold this title? And I had Morocco a few weeks after in April. And I, my first round was against Antonio. And that was another learning experience because I lost. I lost to Antonio. I lost to everyone in my pool. I came in the last place after being Pan American so, champion. Can then I want to go back to what you just said before you started talking about that tournament about managing the expectations and the self doubt and all of that. How is that? Is that what caught? I mean, was that was your learning experience there when you went to the next tournament and then you lost because of that, or how did that impact impact your training or anything like that? What what was the impact of that? So I and even, how did you recover from it? The My Instagram is such an important place in my life. My Instagram page. Why? Because I write down from my heart what I feel. And I remember I wrote that it wasn't my day. I wasn't feeling blah, 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 blah. So when I was competing, for some reason, I was nervous. But nervous like I, wa I don't want to let my sensei down. I don't want to. I don't want people to talk 
speak ill about me like oh he he just won it was a fluke he just won that fun it was a fluke he's not good enough how did he win so now i am comparing myself to someone else i'm comparing myself directly to antonio trying to defeat antonio in this match when the point system is not it's not like that other the point system is you compete for yourself and if you do good enough you'll pass the round you're not competing against anyone so you need to focus on yourself and in that moment i noticed that my energy my chi my whatever was leaving my body was going to something that else was going to the draw it was going to antonio what cut is he doing what is he doing who are the judges is the tatami slippery my energy is flowing out of me into things that are not mine instead of keeping the energy within me thinking of okay what am i going to do how's my body do i have any injury no i don't okay this is what I'm going to do in my kata and super empe. I'm going to focus on this, on my elbows in, on my rotation. I'm going to focus on this. Keeping the energy in. You see, keeping it inside me. Keep it positive, but keep it in. Instead, I was letting my energy out, focusing on the things I cannot control, which is stupid because you lose energy. You get weaker. Think of energy as your power source. And if it's going outside your body, you're getting weaker. You're getting drained. You're going to your tatami. You're not going to do your best performance. And my performance was stale. Stale. And I look at the video and I'm like, that's stale. That's stale. And it hurt. And coming back, I was like, I can't let that ever happen again. And the hard part was, I'm number one in the country, right? Because I won the the, 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 the team trials. And now my, my rival, Gakuji, made it all the way to the semifinals. You see what I'm saying? I'm like, ah. You know, now I feel like the expectations of me and everything that everyone was saying is like, brings you down because it's like i could i didn't live up to it i won the qualify i won the team trials i won pan americans and i lost in round one on the other hand my my rival made it all the way to the semifinals i'm like so now what do i do nothing there's nothing to do learn from the experience move on forget about it, it didn't even happen what you got to remember is the thing you shouldn't ever do and what you should do so that's what i did Fast forward another well, what well, three weeks? I, I, yeah, I, go for it. Go for it. Really, I I really want to appreciate. I I want to thank you for saying that, because what you said about the thing control focusing on the things that you can control, because that's something that I've brought up with some of my students and my athletes. Mm -hmm. you, you know, is you can't focus. You can't even think about what kata the other people are doing or anything like that mm -hmm. because what the judges are doing or what scores the judges give because you can't control any of that. You, like you said, you can only control yourself, mm -hmm. how you feel, what kata you do, the, 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 the small little things within your sphere of influence. And the more you focus on that, the win or lose, but at least you, you're 100% you present, you're there, you're focusing on the things that you control. And so I appreciate that, mm -hmm. that you, you, you saying that because I think that that's one of the most important things for not just an athlete per se, but for, you know, for karateka to begin with. Mm -hmm. It's that, that self journey, you know, it's a, it's your journey. And I always try to go back to it, it's your journey. And I realized that once I got past round one, I realized that I became more focused on myself than what everyone was doing. And I really shined in round two and round three and round four. And the further I got, the more I was able to outperform my competitors. And that proved true to me in Istanbul, it was the first, it was a series eight with 285 competitors today, the biggest one they've had. And I go, it was five rounds in total. And I, I made metal match that time. And I go round one, I do on, on, I keep my strategy. I change it. I used to do, always do super impe. I did round one on, and I passed the round. Uh, I go round two on, on die round three, super impe. And then in round four was the plot twist where I noticed that the judges don't care about what kata you do. In reality, they care about how well you do it. And what I mean by that is there's a long kata. Take super impe, chapanyara. I just want to say super impe because I know the numerical value of super impe, which is 108 hands, right? Uh, take a 108 hands opposed to kururumfa, which is a kata with a significant less more moves than super impe. And kururumfa has, I, I don't know, just, just put a number 20 something. Super Impe has 108. Chatanyara has probably a lot more than Kirunfa as well. And I do Kirunfa in the semifinals. For the simple fact that I said, I made it to semifinals. Let me enjoy myself with my favorite kata. Kirunfa. And people were like, what? Ariel, do Chatanyara. You have your Chatanyara. 
nah, I want to do Korean food. Just let me let me be happy. Let me do my karate. I don't care about winning. I care about my experience again, you know? And in that pool, I had someone from Taipei really good. I had Gakuji at that round. He did uh, Chayan no Chinto. I had Shimbaba, which role model. I have a picture yeah. of him here at my desk. I looked up to him for a long time. I had Shimbaba. I had Goktas from Turkey. I had Hayashida from Japan. I had, it was stacked. Ayato Kai also from Japan. It was stacked. And I go in there, I do Kurunfa. And I was the second to last competitor. I don't expect to win. And when I see the score, I was like, what? I beat Shimbaba. I beat Hayashida. I beat everybody. The only one I lost to was uh, Gotas from Turkey. And I was like, what? Kurunfa did it. You know, and now I made it to bronze medal match against Quintero. And I'm like, okay, do I do Chatanyara? Do I go, do I try to win? Or do I try to send a message? What do I mean by a message? I want to stand out. I want the judges to remember me. I want them to know me as a unique athlete. To be like, that dude is crazy. That guy is something else. <laughs> that guy does not, that guy is, is you know, is, he's different. Is is this Shisochin? Yes. And that's what I said, <laughs> I'm doing Shisochin. And everyone was like, what? And they, didn't you just see me win with Kurumfa? Against Super Empe from Shimbaba, against Gankaku from Hayashi. Didn't you just see me do that with Kurumfa? Who's to say Shisoshin cannot win? Who's to say? So Kintero goes, he does Ananda, I do Shisoshin. When I saw my score, I almost flipped. It was a 26.20. Highest score by far I've ever gotten. I lost to Kintero by over a full point. No big deal. That's not the point. The point was that Shisoshin scored very well, and I was like, okay. Kintero so ends can up. I, yeah, can, can I ask you a question? So, what did what did your sensei say after that? He was very proud of me because before yeah. we used to kind of get a little bit of I don't I don't want to say like like Okinawa would question Sensei Young and be like, why is he why is he doing so much like Shito Ryukata and so much you know why isn't he doing so much Goju Ryukata? So my sensei was like, good job, boy, good job. He at that time he was happy, he was happy because it was my decision. I said I'm going to do. Yeah. Uh, Kurumfa, I'm going to do Shisoshin. I'm not going to do Chatanyara. So yeah. he was very happy and he and he loved it. He was like, man. And there was a judge um, that gave me a tight score with Quintero. So I was like, okay. hmm, with Shisoshin. I was like, if this judge thinks that I, myself and Quintero are the same, that he gave him a 9 9 and gave me a 9 9. And I was like, this is something. What does that mean? If I, on any other day, this judge sits down and I do a better kata than my Shisoshin and Kintero does the exact same kata he did the exact same way, he might give it to me. And this is my mentality. That means in my head, I'm doing something okay. That means I'm moving forward. I, I, I'm achieving, so, all I gotta do is keep walking. Learn my experience, walk. And then I think the biggest thing that ever happened to me was the event right after. To this day has been my most uh, second, right? I would say like second most important because I learned something and another one more important. But it was Shanghai, 2019, the hardest Premier League ever. Usually it was eight pools of eight people because of the 64. But to this one, not many people went because Shanghai required a visa and the trial restrictions were a little bit crazy for that event. My pool of 12 was stacked. We're talking about Mendak. Remember Mendak from back mm. in the day, world champion yeah. two times. Yeah. I don't know, beat Valdesi in French, 2012. French world champion. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have you, Just Moore Gunner, which was the guy that yep. defeated Antonio Diaz in the world championships in 2016. Um, we have Gotas again, which has been doing incredible things from Turkey. We have people from Hong Kong. We have now three Japanese athletes. I had Kyuna, I had King Joarata, and I had Hayashida. People of, who I've never beaten, right? So I'm like, whoa, and there's only one person going to the next round. Uh, you know, I say one person going to the next round. Why? Because in my head, I'm not being I'm not being Kyuna, I'm not being Kinjo, and I'm not being Hayashida because they're Japan. So now in my head, I have to be either Mendak, Yuja, and Gotas. I have to defeat all of them. Yeah. Right. So I go in there, and I remember my strategy. I wanted to do Subarembe or Anandai because it's hard. And my coach, Manti, is like, no, we're doing Anand. I remember that trip, I was in a good mood. I saw my draw and I saw, I was like, no big deal. You know, tomorrow I'll think about it. I'll go to sleep. And on Mantilla, right before I'm going out, he notices that I'm a little like jittery. I'm always jittery, but this was more than usual. Kind of focusing on my energy was leaving me again. 
And he kind of picked up on it and he's like, hey, come here, come here, come here. And he grabs me, he goes, slaps me super hard right across the face. My, uh, It was hard. He was like, listen, 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 listen. Keep it all inside of you, okay? Uh, remember what I told you, PKF, you're going to go to Olympia, blah, blah. He's like, for your family, for your mom, for your dad, for your sensei, you know, all these times, all, all the sacrifices you're making. You're paying this all out of pocket. You you are making your dream come true. You, blah, and then, I'm like, yeah, you're right, man. You know, what? I was pissed off because he hit me in the face, and I was like, okay, but we're good. We're good, all right? We're good. So I go in there, I do an anan, but I felt good. Everything was connected. I was like, pom, pom, everything. Since Young was there with me in my head, it was like, everything was going well. I bow, and I see my score it was a 25 0 flat. I beat Kinjo Arata. I beat Hayashida in round one. I beat everyone. The only one I lost was Kuna. And then I saw the scoring. Once he was like, look at the score between you and Kuna. It was a big difference, but look at this one judge. One judge gave me a 9 2 and gave Kuna a 9 2. And we tied us. That one judge tied us. That means the one judge thought that me and Kuna were at the same level. At that time, I, I, that just made me very happy. So I go in the next round. In the next round, it was six Japanese, myself, and Antonio. How are you going to pass that round? We're talking about Moto's brother. We're talking about all the Japanese. Like, hey, it was hard. And I passed. Yep. I beat Shimbaba. I, I, and, I, and I made it right there to the third round. Third round, it was myself, Shimbaba, Kuna, Antonio. This is tough now, right? This is, we're, talk, we're going back to Morocco. And we all did, all of us did Anandai. And, okay. I, and, I, and Shimbaba goes first. Gets 25, 26, something like that. I go there. I get 25 flat. And then Antonio goes, and I'm like, I, I need to beat him. Because if not, I don't go to the medal match. And I was like, oh, my God. He gets his score, and it was 25-9-6. 24-9-6. And it, so I beat him by 0 0.04. Super close. Yeah. So I make bronze medal match. Kino goes there, uh, uh, you know, obliterates us with this <laughs> extremely high score. Whatever. No big deal. We, I, I never, and I'll tell you something funny that many people try to do. Many people try to compare themselves to the best, which, was, which is yeah. Kuna. And I never right. did that. Because he was so far, so far superior than me, and there were so many people better than me at the time that I couldn't look up all the way to the top of the ladder because I'm gonna miss a step, fall, and have to climb up. So I never did that. I always focus on the person ahead of me. Who is ahead of me? Yep. Who do I have to beat? So in that part, in that point, it was Antonio because Shimbaba was higher ranked, and I'm like, I need to beat Antonio. He's the next one, and this is how what. And I was what. I never even compared myself to Kuna. Kuna didn't even exist because he was so far of the far of the galaxy at the time that I'm like. Dude, you do your own thing. I don't mind. And I got, I went to battle match. I went against Moto. I lost in a 3-4 decision. Moto beat me for bronze medal. But that was the biggest thing for me um, in 2019. 2020 was complicated for all of us. Oh, well, dude, COVID. Yeah, of course. So I'm sure you what before I get there, because 2020, I dropped down again. So I get, like my karate journey is this. It's just down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. A lot of learning experiences you know 2020 we have the team trials in team trials i lose um i lost the final to to gakuji um again another great match we keep pushing it like i said the best kata people in the, in the world i think are, are us we're going to be us um i lose we go to i go to chile i got fifth in chile series a and then we go to paris i didn't perform so well in paris i learned from the experience again i, I had to wear a gi i didn't like because we can't wear Hirota anymore in the Premier Leagues. And I love to wear Hirota. Right. So I couldn't wear that. I had to wear Shuredo. And for me, I don't like Shuredo on my body. Too heavy, but I had to wear it. So I learned, okay, don't let that bother me. And that's what happened in Paris. I had to wear a Shuredo gi. I didn't like it. And I was kind of like, again, that negative vibe. I like, ah, and I didn't perform well. And I lose to many people. I lost to people I beat him before that I have defeated. And I lost. I did not perform well. Uh, February, we had Dubai. I went to round two. It was okay. Um, I did a new kata in February. It was Ohandai. Because it's funny. I had only practiced Ohandai three, uh, for three weeks. And then I did it in, in Dubai just to test it out in round two. Fast forward a, lot, a few year, a year later, I did it in the Olympics, right? So it was, yeah. that, was a, that, was, that competition set the bar. March, I lost round one again in Austria. And Gakuji made it all the way to the bronze medal match. You see, so again, the expectations, again, this role of the expectations is difficult. Why? Because I am the one going to a qualifying tournament because I'm the, the highest ranked. And again, same thing happened from a year ago where my performance didn't meet the expectations of my country, my sensei and everything. And it was like, oh, man, my rival does better. 
So now we have to push again. Pushing, pushing, pushing before we know it, COVID happens and we cannot travel. And the dojo, no one can go to the dojo except myself and Grace Lau. What do we do? When are we going to compete again? The qualifying tournament is supposed to happen in June. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Nothing. I keep training. I keep training. I keep training the same way. I adapt. I start doing strength training with Grace. I do what her coach sent her. And I kind of copied whatever her strength coach sent her. Because it was off season now. We don't know if we're going to compete. I had never done weights in my life. I've never carried a barbell. I've never done any of that. So it was all kettlebell work at the time. Boom. Paris open on um, the Paris qualifiers canceled. What are we gonna do? Nothing, no big deal. I start building a dojo in my backyard because my sensei had to close his dojo because of COVID. I built a dojo in my backyard and I built a gym in my backyard. And I started training in my backyard every day. I would always see my sensei in person every day in the dojo. But there was a scare where we, we thought that I was gonna have COVID because of a guy that massaged me, my my my, my therapist. He had, he had COVID and then my sensei thought I was going to get COVID. So he made me self-quarantine at home, which I did. I didn't get COVID, thank God. Um, but this made something happen very special for me. At home, I couldn't be with my sensei for four hours straight, right? So I, now I had to do something different. I had to start writing down things like this. I had to write down a program of what am I, go, how am I going to warm up? How am I going to do Kihon? What am I going to do? What, what is the goal for this week? What do I want to reach? Do I want to improve my Maigiri? Do I want to improve my Hikiyashi? Do I want to focus on my elbows not popping up? What am I going to do? So I came up with what I'm going to do for this week. This is the warm up. This is the Kihon training. This is the Kata training. Then I'm going to call my sensei for an hour. And then we're going to go through the full Kata, full power. He's going to correct me. Whatever you say, sensei, I will fix. I'm ready to go. So that one hour, be, it, it became very focused with Sensei Young. It was a one hour of intense so, training. So before that, when you could train with, with Sensei Young in person, would he tell you, like even your warm-ups and your training, would he just tell you what to do when you would do that? No, and then when so you it was a little different. Him, I would go to the dojo, and that day, whatever I felt like doing, I would do. If I want to do some Hojo Undo, I would do some Hojo Undo. If I want to do some Kihon. But my Sensei will walk in and walk. You know how Okinawa is. The Sensei walks yeah. in, looks at you a little bit corrects you like your elbow and whatever walks back goes back to the office and does his thing walks in yeah. and then when it was cut the time he'll sit down look at you tell you what's wrong if, it, if he likes it or not or he'll be talking to a guest you know so it wasn't always like like that 100 percent. but it was sometimes and again when you're in an environment with many people it's very difficult to 100 percent focus 100 percent listen very difficult yeah. but then in my dojo in my home dojo I was able to call Sensei when I was ready. What do I mean by when I was ready? It's like, Sensei, I am ready to listen. And this is something very important because not everyone is ready to listen the moment they walk in the dojo. There's a lot of things that people walk into the dojo within their head, whether it's school, um, girlfriend problems, uh, whatever, many problems, you know? And it kind of takes a while to forget about it. You can't just enter the dojo and forget about everything. No, you enter the dojo, you know, you start doing something and little by little those thoughts start to seep and you are able to focus on your training. A hundred percent. Really be in there. And in the dojo, it's hard to do that because my sensei was always there and then I'm getting in there and then yeah. it's already, I, I I start warming up and it's already a correction on my warm up. What? You know, I, at that moment, I'm not ready to listen because I'm trying to, you know, get in my flow. But alone, I was able to start my warm up and I would, I found out what works for me. And I'm warming up, I'm warming up. This is good, this is good, this is good. I'm drenched, my keyhole training went well. And I said, Sensei, this is, this is my training for the week. What do you think? Good, bad, whatever. Okay, good. Adjust this, okay. Boom, three hours, we're done. Sensei Young, I call you now, FaceTime. Boom, put the camera up. I'm doing Anandai today. Okay, start. First section. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> okay, listen, do this, focus on this technique, try this out. Bah, 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 bah. And I would look at my video at the same time while Sensei was telling me because I wanted to see what he saw. So I'll record myself and I'll sit down and I'll watch it while he tells me. Okay, again. And before I knew it, that one hour was flew by incredibly fast. But I was drenched and I did feel better. I felt the difference and I was like, wow, Sensei. As I was able to sit down, look at the what he look at what he was looking at, because I'm looking at it, because I'm looking at my video from the same angle. I'm like, you're right. Because I might not feel that my elbow comes out, an example, but he saw it, but I didn't feel it. I felt like it was in. And I'm like, you know, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, let's do this. How do we? How do I do that? Like that? Okay, let me try that. Boom, you're right. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So there was this communication between Sensei Young and myself that just grew and grew. And it's, this, it's like a relationship that just flourished. And it just became something perfect. Kept improving, kept improving, kept improving. And I feel like that training with Sensei Young made a big difference for me. 
Grace and I, Grace Lau is my training partner. She has been for a long time, almost two years. We had to do a practice competition, right? And Grace is good. And I want to win. I want to beat Grace. And at the time, I, 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 Grace is amazing, She's right? She's really good. She's a world bronze medalist. So I want to be great. But I want to be Grace. I want to be better than, I don't want to lose to you. I don't want to lose to anyone. That's just me. I don't want to lose to anyone. I don't care who you are. I don't want to lose. And I come up with a strategy. Usually my strategy would be like, Chatanyara, um, Anandai, Suparimbe, um, Ohandai. Just an example. Whatever. But against Grace, I, I had to do a little different. I was like, this. I'm going to try a different strategy. Because she's going to start off with um, Pasai, or Tomari no Pasai. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do Kururumfa. Because her Tomari Pasai is very unique to her. And a kata that I know is unique to me is my Kururumfa, because I love it. So I'm going to match it with, her, with my Kururumfa. Okay, her round two, she's going to do Papur. And you know what? Round two, I'm going to take her out with my Anandai. Okay. And round three, I want to rest a little bit, but be explosive at the same time. I'm going to do Anand. Round four is against her Chatanyara. I need to throw a curveball. Something she won't expect. And I said, Oh, Handai. So where's Suparembe? Where's my Kusanku? Where are these katas? And I said, not for this competition. So I go in there. Um, we had a panel of judges judging us from around the world, from Hungary, blah, blah, blah. And I go against Grace, you know, I, I won round one. She won round two and three, and then I won round four. So we got a tie. Whatever. And then now these four katas stuck with me. And I'm like, you know, maybe this works. But I was always insecure about my shorter katas because I never thought I was good enough. I would always struggle passing round one. Grace always passed her round one. She didn't need to think about her round one. I needed to think about what cut am I going to do in round one because I don't pass round one. It's very difficult. But she's like, you need to have more confidence in your kururumfa. You need to really believe it because I noticed you when you did your kururumfa in, in Shanghai. I was like, really? And I'm a fan of Grace. So the fact that my, someone that I admire told me that they noticed me because of my kururumfa, that it was unique, that it was special. I was like, you know, maybe you're onto something. Maybe my sensei wasn't wrong, you know, because he's telling me this. But again, I'm not <laughs> listening. Funny, funny, funny how he, right? You know, sensei was maybe right. he was right about that. <laughs> you know, maybe he was right. So, I'm like, Kurunfa, okay. So now I start training Kurunfa, Anandai, Anan, and um, Ohandai. So I'm training them constantly, constantly. Again, I keep building my programs. I adjust. I do all of this. I learn. My sensei gives us like um, we have lectures on Saturdays of technique, this is what we're focusing on, this is the muscle group we need to use, this is how we need to use it, and I take notes, I'm like, this is how, I'm... now I create a program based around the, the the lecture that he did on Saturday and what I want to do so I can improve, right? And whatever, this happens, this happens, this happens. We have the first Premier League of 2021. And this is where I believe it all changed for me. Yeah. You know how the rules say you shouldn't hit yourself, you shouldn't, um, external cues and all this, you know, the rules are very clear on like, if you hit yourself, it cuts a deduction, um, like if you lost balance and losing balance right. is a big deal. It's a technical, um, it's an athletic foul. And I'm competing. I'm in, I'm in Turkey, in Istanbul, the first Premier League in a long time of, you know, we're talking about like over a year of competition right. and it's tough. You know, we, we have, again, really good athletes. And my round one, I have Busato and a few other guys that are good. I had Hector Sension from Panama. I had the, the Turkish kid that had just gotten second at the world championships. It was tough. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Oh, man, I can't risk it. I'm going to do Anandai. Grace calls me and Sensei called me and said, dude, do Kurunfa. Sensei was always a little scared. Robert Young was always a little scared because he doesn't want me to lose. And he, he, he he's afraid that they won't appreciate my Kurunfa like how Grace would appreciate it or how the judges would appreciate it. But Grace convinced me to do Kurunfa. So I'm like, okay, whatever. But now right before I step on the tatami, I'm like, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try something new. And I didn't make any noise. What do I mean by that? No, I didn't breathe out. I avoided my gi as much as possible. It was like, you don't hear anything. Right? And I, was, I don't know why that day it occurred to me. I mean, I hit myself. Because no matter how much you try, somehow, if your hands are relaxed, you're going to hit yourself. You're going to make noise. You're going you're gonna to do some type of breath that's weird or different. Or it's an external cue. Yep. Hide it. So I tried to hide it. What I did was I didn't exhale. I, I kind of kept it in, which is wrong. But... I noticed that I got a high score, higher than many people. Was it because I got stronger from the weight training or the technique? Or was it really because these guys are paying attention to the breath, the external cues, and the slapping of the gi? I go round two, and I do a Handai. Now it gets harder. I have Azerbaijan, which is a kid Roman, and he's a 
European bronze, senior bronze medalist like four times consecutively. I have Sergio Galan, another kid that's incredible. He got a bat, bronze, silver medalist. I have Abu Sato. I have Ali Sofoglu. Okay? I go in, I do all Hyundai the same way. And I pass him fourth behind Roman, Busato, um, and Ali. But the, the, the score between me and Busato got close. It was like 0.16. So I go semifinals. I do Anandai. I say, I'm going to keep my rhythm going. I'm not going to hit. I'm not going to make noise. It's really hard. I've never, I've never tried this before. But I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to keep it going. It's been working. And I do it again. And I beat Busato. I beat Roman. And I go in second place to the bronze medal match. Um... On the other side, it was tough. It was Gakuji, Mason, Antonio. Uh, Mason made it past um, Antonio, past Gakuji, past Gotas from Turkey. Yeah. And he made it to a bronze medal yeah, match with me. And I'm like, this is a big deal because yeah. he has this momentum now. You know, he has yeah. this momentum. I cannot um, take it lightly because he's coming up. It's, this is going to be a big deal. So I'm like, okay, what am I going to do now? I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to do Anon. But now, this, the thing was... When I was competing in these events, I had a warm-up written down that I was doing every single day. How many students do you have that you warm them up? You know, they, they, they warm up in the dojo a certain way and then they go to the tournament and they warm up and they do completely different things that you've never seen them do before. I don't know. So, yeah, that's one of my... I'm glad you mentioned that because that's one of the things that I try to tell them over and over again. Do the exact same, same thing... thing. Whatever you're going to do at the tournament, that needs to be your everyday warm-up, warm up, your everyday routine so that your body is doing the same thing. It's not like this jarring shift between, yep. oh, this is my dojo training and then this is my tournament. It should be continuous, the exact yep. same. Yep. I have, I have what I, I have. What I have. I have a training and I have a warm-up. There's two different things. Training is to get you better. Training is not to warm you up. There's a difference. Training is to help you improve. Warm-up is to help you perform. There's a difference. You need to find what works for you. And through creating several warm-ups for myself in that span of that year during the whole pandemic, I was able to come up with what warm-ups work best for me. And for the competition, I wrote down, this is the warm-up I'm going to do. I'm going to do jump rope. I jump rope. And I look extremely, I was extremely insecure about it at first because I would start jumping rope with all these guys, you know, doing their thing. And I'm here like jumping rope for eight minutes. People are looking at me funny. I'm making, you know, because I'm, I'm jumping rope. Who jumps rope before they do kata? Me, right? And at first I was a little insecure because I feel like dumb jumping rope. But this was my warm up. This is part of my warm up. And then I would go on to the list. I would do this. I would do this. I would do that. I went down through the list of the five warm ups. And then I would do my stretching. And then I would do my little bit of kihon. And before I knew it, I was drenched the same way I was in the dojo. I was ready to perform. And I did it. And I and I, exactly like that I did it. And then on Sunday, I had to repeat it again because it's my bronze medal match. So guess what? I got out my jump rope and I, I got to jump rope again, you know? And I start my warm up. I start the stretching. I do everything exactly the same way with the resistance band, with the jump rope, with the, with the stretch, everything. And I perform at the level that I want to perform. And anyone that saw me in Premier Leagues or anything, from Istanbul all the way through the Olympics to Cairo to all the events I've done this year, is the exact same warm up with small minor refinements and adjustments of an extra drill or one less drill or something different, but the exact same warm up. And I remember that when I got bronze medal match, I was super happy because finally I got my bronze medal after what? So many years of nothing. I got bronze, yeah. this is going to be incredible. Let me keep the momentum going. I go back home, I program the next one for, for Lisbon. I program everything how it's supposed to go. Boom, 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 boom. Perfect program, I feel like I had everything right. I go to Lisbon, I do the exact same thing. This is the warm-up. The only difference is in this been I change the strategy. Why? Because I need points. I want to go to Paris qualifier as the number one seed. Why is this important? This is going to separate me from the number two seed. So now for Lisbon, it was a strategy not of winning a medal, but of getting to the medal match to assure me enough points so that I maintain my number one ranking in Paris qualifier. So I'm the number one seed. So that I go last. So that I don't face the number two seed until the finals. This was important. This was a strategy by Mantilla. Um, this wasn't my strategy. My strategy would have been to do Kurumfa and then, you know, win. But maybe that wouldn't help because my first round was extremely tough. Very difficult. So I did I did um, Ohan Dai in round two. I mean, round one. Um, Anan Dai in round two. Anan in round three. I had Busato and that's where I lost. I beat Busato, but there was an upset. Yuki Ujihara beat everybody. Oh, yeah. 
and here I am like, man, came out of nowhere. And here I am like, this was unexpected. What? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now my mind is running at 100 miles per hour thinking qualifying tournament is going to be a little bit difficult. Whatever, I'll get to that in a little bit. I go to bronze medal match against Moto. No big deal. I lose. I do Kurumfa. Good time. Some judges give me the victory. You know, like, I'm not upset. I got my, the mission was complete. And uh, the fifth place was achieved. I got the points. Maintain my ranking. I go to Dubai for two weeks. And with, well, I had a training camp with Grace in Dubai. Just hurting myself with training, boom, boom, boom. Pushing each other for the um, the qualifier. Meanwhile, I was in Dubai. Yuki was making history in the European Championship, getting bronze medal for his country. Big deal. Again, I'm here like, this kid is getting momentum. Yeah. He's doing well. I need to get, I need to keep pushing, you know, because it's a big deal. No problem. I keep training. We keep going. Qualifying tournament. 